Hey everybody, let's continue our study of limits. All right, for this first example, let's consider and graph this function. Okay, well, without picking up a calculator, we can quickly graph the um, x-intercepts. So we know the zeros of this function occur at x equals 0, x equals 2, and x equals negative 3. Zero, two, and negative three. Okay, now from here, what we can do is uh, think about that if you were to perform the algebra and FOIL and distribute, or multiply all those uh, um, expressions together up here, that we would produce that would produce a cubic function. All right, and it's a cubic function with a positive coefficient on the leading term. So what that means is the graph is going to come from down here, it's going to hit this x-intercept, it's going to fall below, okay, and then it's going to come back up. Okay. All right, we don't have any double roots, there's no exponents on any of these binomials or this expression right here, um, and so the cubic is going to look something like this. All right, so let's use this graph to answer some more additional limit questions. Okay. So looking down here, evaluate the limits graphically, G, numerically N, or analytically A. All right, so for G, okay, we're going to use the graph to help us answer this limit question. As X approaches negative 3, now remember, without the superscript, we have to consider approaching 3, negative 3 from both the left and the right. So when you look up here, remember, this is a well-behaved polynomial function. So the limit is going to exist at any X value. So when you look at this right here, as x approaches negative 3 from the left side of the graph and the right side of the graph, you can see that the graph is going to be coming into that 0. Okay, so the limit is 0. I'm going to draw faster. Okay, now numerically this says to us, find the limit of this function as x approaches negative 3, and, and I've provided, yikes, a data table here. I don't know what's going on right here. Okay, that's supposed to be negative 2.9. I'll have to fix that in a, a later video, I suppose. Okay, numerically, the limit as x approaches negative 3 of this function. Well, what I've left here is some space for us to fill in the y values, okay, as we take turns putting each of these x values into the given function up here. Okay, and notice that these x values right here are approaching negative 3 from the left side. Okay, and then right here from negative 2.9, back to negative 2.99, etc., we're approaching negative 3 um, from the right. Okay, now I'm not going to take the time because with this video, I'd have to keep it within 15 minutes, so, but what you can do is you can take the time to take each of these inputs and uh, find the outputs in this expression right here. Remember, you go to your calculator, type that into Y1, you can either use the trace feature on the calculator, or at the home screen, you can evaluate the function using the proper keystroke. Okay. But I think you can see that um, once you do get these answers uh, for each of these inputs, that these y values right here are going to be getting smaller and smaller, um, approaching 0. And then from the right, each of these values okay, are going to be approaching 0 um, uh, from the right-hand side. These from the left and these from the right. All right, so we, I'm just going to assume right here that that limit is also going to be 0. All right, so for class, the next time that we come together, have these notes completed with these values uh, filled in, and then we'll check them together. All right, come down here. Analytically, the limit as x approaches negative 3. Well, analytically, if you remember, is just trying direct substitution first. And if that works wonderful, we're finished. If it doesn't, we're going to have to come up with some other pl plans. Um, so right now, plug in negative 3. But as you can see, when you evaluate for negative 3 here and for x, you get a 0 factor and then 0 times whatever number this would be, and this negative 3 right here is still going to give 0. So um, using the different approaches, we get the same limit. Okay. All right, and then what I did here was I said, let's consider the limit of the function as x approaches 0 from the left, and we're going to use the graphical approach. All right, so coming back up here, here's 0. It just kind of position yourself at x equals 0, but remember you don't want to be here at 0. What you want to do is you want to approach 0 from the left. So all these x-coordinates, okay, right here, um, are to the left of 0, and I'm getting closer and closer to 0. So two conditions have to be met. I have to be to the left of the x-value, and then I have to be approaching that um, target x-value. 
uh, you can see the graph is going into uh, the x-intercept there, so this left limit is zero. All right, numerically, we're going to evaluate the function at values that are smaller than zero to the left of zero. So I have this data table, and again, based on our time constraints um, with these videos, uh, I'm not going to take the time to fill in these values. But again, one at a time into the given function, um, evaluate and fill in the data table. And next time we meet in class, uh, we'll look at those and check those. Uh, but it should confirm that these values in this data table are approaching zero. And they might be kind of interesting, like exponential nota or scientific notation, uh, so we can discuss that in class. All right, moving down here. Analytically, what's the limit of this function as x approaches zero from the left? Well, okay, don't worry about the superscript just yet. Again, with the analytical approach, just go ahead and try direct substitution. Go ahead and plug zero in everywhere you see x. Well, this will be zero. This factor will be negative 2, and that factor will be 3, but that product is still going to be 0. So all three approaches um, do result in a 0 when we're evaluating the limit um, as x approaches 0 from the left. Okay, uh, same thing uh, right here with this one as well. Graphically, as you approach 0 from the right, if you look back at your graph up above, as you come into 0 from the right, Okay, the y values are going into zero. Numerically, again, fill in the data table. We'll check those in class. Analytically, just go ahead and plug in zero everywhere you see x, and it confirms it is zero. Okay, and then what I did here, as you can see at the bottom here, is I said, okay, what's the limit of the function as x approaches zero? We've already considered from the left and from the right, and because the left limit and the right limit are equal, we can say the limit exists and it is equal to zero. Whether we look at the graph, uh, whether we put both of the previous two tables together and build one table here, um, the limit is still going to be zero. And it looks like this fell to the next page, so this should be on here. It's on the second page, but on your pay, um, handout, it should be on the first page, hopefully. I hope so. Yeah. So that's also zero. Goodness, right faster. Okay. All right. Let's come back up here. Okay. Uh, this says graphically evaluate the limit of the function as x approaches two. Well, again, two uh, two gives us another x-intercept. So graphically, we're looking at the limit from the left and the right, and the graph suggests that we're going into zero. Okay. That that point again doesn't have to be there. Uh, for the limit to exist, but it does. It's a well-behaved function, so the functional value will equal the limit at any particular x or c value. Analytically, plug in 2. Well, you can see this factor becomes 0, so the whole answer will be 0. Okay, kind of transitioning here. Uh, the limit of the function as x approaches 1. We'll notice that up here on the graph as x approaches 1, here's 1 on the graph. Okay, the y values aren't going into zero. It's not a zero, an x-intercept, a root. Um, and so it says graphically evaluate the limit. Okay, well, again, our options are you should have this into y1 graphically. You can um, produce a window displaying this graph. Uh, you can press the trace key, uh, press 1, and it should give you the y-coordinate that belongs to uh, x equals negative 1. Okay. Or again, you can go to the home screen and evaluate y sub 1 or wherever you have it stored in at um, 1, and I believe the answer is going to be negative 4. So if you want to pause the video and check it, that'd probably be a good idea. Analytically, direct sub in, evaluate the um, function at 1. Uh, it is well behaved, so when we do plug 1 in, uh, that functional value will equal the limit. So 1 times negative 1 times 4. Confirms to be 4. Okay. Okay. Now here's a um, big change right here, so I'm just going to kind of say, okay. Now look what happens. We haven't seen this before. This is new for us. Graphically, what's the limit of the function as x approaches positive infinity? As the x-coordinates get larger and larger and larger, what are the y-values approaching? Okay. This is another way to say we're considering n-behavior the extreme left or extreme right of the graph. What are the ends of the graph doing? It's n behavior of a polynomial function. 
So as x takes on very, very large values, okay, the further the graph goes to the right, think about where you're at on the graph, the y values just keep getting larger and larger and larger. Okay, so we say that that limit as x approaches infinity, oh goodness, okay, is positive infinity. <laughs> okay, numerically, okay, we can build the table. Okay, so let's consider that x is 10. Okay, fill that value in. Okay, let's consider that x is 100. Again, plug that in for every x in the original problem. 1,000, let's say x is 10,000. You'll be able to see from these values that as x takes on larger and larger values, the y's are getting increasingly larger as well. Analytically, we can still, even with this polynomial function, um, substitute in, as we did in the previous ones, um, we can substitute in infinity. So let's think about this. Infinity here, infinity, infinity reduced by 2, infinity increased by 3, doesn't matter. Positive infinity times positive infinity times positive infinity is going to result in it's a little bit better, positive infinity. So we're looking at limits at infinity. So much of this is, is um, something we've already covered, but I wanted to add a new little piece, okay? Graphically, the limit of the function as x approaches negative infinity. We'll go back to your graph. As x takes on smaller and smaller values, as x gets smaller and smaller, meaning it's going to the left, 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 what are the y values doing? Well, I know it's not a great graph, but my y values in that case, and behavior, are also getting smaller and smaller and smaller. Okay, so we're considering n behavior, and uh, this limit graphically would result in negative infinity. The y's are going uh, to negative infinity. Numerically, again, fill in the data table here. You can see that these values are getting smaller and smaller and smaller, and perhaps they'll be in scientific notation as well. So be on the lookout for that, like we discussed uh, one of the first days together with the E notation. Okay. Analytically, evaluating this limit right here, again, you can plug in negative infinity here, plug in negative infinity here, and here as well. So um, this is going to look like negative infinity cubed, negative infinity times itself three times, and so a negative times itself three times is going to give you a negative infinity. And that confirms what we saw in the other approaches as well. Okay, got to draw a little faster. Okay, at this point I'm going to stop the video and um, I'm going to create another one because I see that I'm nearing the time limit of 15 minutes. Um, we're going to look at the back together in just a minute in a second video. So I'll see you in just a second.